Amen. At the start, we'll take a few minutes and look to the Lord in prayer. Um, we, uh, it's, it is a blessing to be able to go to the Lord in prayer and to be to know that God hears our prayer. Uh, we've been praying for John Butcher for many weeks, and John's with us today. Yay. So, I know his goal was to be here last two weeks. But uh, that didn't work out. That's all right. Our, our plans are not always God's plan. Amen. But you know something? God's always in control. Yeah. We can trust Him. We can know that you know He has a perfect will for our lives, no matter what we're going through. I know, uh, I know some of you are going through some, some real severe uh, physical things that uh, you know, we've been praying for. And I just thank my God that, that He is a God who cares about my every sickness, my every hurt, my every need. Um, if it be physical, spiritual, emotional, um, you know, financial, if it be family, if it be uh, whatever, God is in control of it all. And we can just praise God for that. And so, uh, so today, as we uh, go to the Lord in prayer, let's remember some of our prayer requests. Continue to pray for Pat Fisher. I know uh, she would greatly appreciate that. We're hoping that she comes home here in another week, <coughs> two weeks. Um, I pray, uh, pray that God would uh, would intervene and, and really touch her body and strengthen her and minister to her. Uh, I know uh, I know she would appreciate that very much. Um, and so uh, also uh, need to uh, need to mention uh, two other folks. Uh, let's uh, let's remember uh, Lynn uh, Lynn Zettelmoyer's uh, mom. Uh, and Lynn, in, uh, in the struggle that they've been having, uh, her mom's been, uh, been um, actually the last couple of days she's been doing a little bit better, uh, from what we understand, but uh, Lynn, uh, Lynn's been with her all through the uh, Christmas, um, Christmas season. Uh, she, uh, she stepped out of teaching school last, uh, the last week of school before the break, uh, just so she can spend quality time with her mother. And uh, I know that she would appreciate, especially as school starts back up, she would just appreciate our prayers for her mom, for her dad, as well as uh, for her as she travels back and forth up to uh, the Reading area to be with her parents. Um, and, then, um, and then also um, continue to remember, uh, if you will, uh, the, um, um, the, the Wades. I know, uh, I know Karen appreciates our prayers. And so uh, just... Uh, uh, you know, when, when we pray for one, you need to pray for both, uh, husband and wife. And so uh, those things. And then there's other things going on. There's going to be some surgeries coming up and doctor's visits. And uh, just uh, that the Lord's blessing would be upon each and every one. Uh, that uh, tonight, uh, you know, um, would, uh, God would bless tonight here in this country as we celebrate the new year. Uh, that God would uh, be in that as well. So uh, let's look to the Lord in prayer here today. Oh, our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming before your throne in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, you're a God who hears us. But Lord, I do thank you that, Lord, you tell us to ask and we shall receive. But Lord, we don't have to ask because, Lord, you already know what those needs are. Lord, you want us to ask by faith. You want us to ask believing. You want us to trust you. Lord, it's a sign of our trust when we can go before the throne of God and we can say, okay, Lord, I'm bringing this burden before you. And uh, Lord, I pray that as we bring burdens before you, that our burdens would be lifted and that, Lord, a peace that passes all understanding would be, uh, would be brought about to each and every one with these burdens. And so, Lord, I pray today for some of these things. I do want to... Uh, um, remember, Lord, as I look down on our prayer list there in the bulletin, I do remember, want to remember uh, Linda Walsh's brother, James. And uh, Lord, I just ask, um, I just ask, Lord, that you would, um, you would uh, heal him. Uh, Lord, the, the need he has more than physical healing is spiritual healing. And Lord, I ask that, Lord, you would just draw himself to you. That he would, uh, he would hear the gospel, he would respond to that gospel. Lord, I pray for Pat Fisher today. I continue to pray for continued healing. And uh, Lord, you work mightily. Uh, Lord, you know the needs that Pat has. And I pray that you would just encourage her today. 
whatever, uh, whatever that is, Lord, that even right now in the bed that she's laying in, Lord, as she's um, um, recovering, that, Lord, you would just encourage her heart, minister to her. And, uh, Lord, we've prayed for, for John Butcher the same way for many weeks. And, Lord, here's, he's here today. And, Lord, we thank you for that. And, Lord, we anticipate the day when Pat can be back in our fellowship, can be back with us, leading the singing and ministering here as she so loves to do. And so, Lord, you work mightily. Lord, I also want to pray today for Lynn and, uh, Lord, for traveling mercies, for uh, healing for her parents. Uh, Lord, be with them. Lord, I, I think so often, and I, I think even of my own family, my own parents, when, Lord, they were struggling physically. Lord, I wanted healing for them, but sometimes healing, the best healing that uh, a parent can have is be ushered into eternity. And, uh, Lord, we, we're not praying that for Lynn, but, Lord, we just ask that, Lord, your perfect will be done. And that, Lord, you know what is needed for Lynn's mom. Lord, you know what's needed for Lynn's dad. You know what's needed for Lynn. Why? Because you are a sovereign God. And you have allowed this, uh, this trial, this, uh, this suffering, however we want to call it. We've, you've allowed this in their lives. And Lord, be glorified through it, we do pray. Lord, I do pray for those with some eye difficulties. I think of Tanya today. And, and uh, Lord, just minister to her. I think of... I think of Donna who's struggling. I think of Nancy who's struggling. I think of Pam who's struggling. And Lord, we just pray that you would be with these ladies and minister to them and encourage them, strengthen them. Lord, I think of, um, Lord, I think of Linda Davis today and the, the, the healing of her leg. We thank you that surgery went well this week. And Lord, we just commit them before you. And Lord, I think of the Wood family today. And I know that through the holidays, I know that um, uh, Larry and Martha struggled, Lord, with, with sickness and illness. And, and uh, Lord, we just commit them before you. We ask, Lord, that, that you would just watch over them, be with, be with Beaver and Kathy. And Lord, I know Kathy is struggling right now. We just uplift her before your throne. And Lord, we do, uh, we do pray for, um, uh, for Patty and Jerry's uh, 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 son and daughter-in-law as they're struggling with COVID right now. We just... Lord, we just give all of you, we give all these things before your throne of grace. Lord, if it be a cold or if it be a, an upcoming surgery or if it be, Lord, something major that's going on, we know that you are a sovereign God. You are in control of all things. And Lord, we rely on you today. And Lord, even before anything's done, we say thank you. Because Lord, we thank you for allowing us to go through it. We thank you for the grace that you give us to go through it. And we thank you, Lord, for the answer of prayer even before it's answered. Lord, you're a great and gracious and loving God. Lord, there are many others here on our list. I think of Deb's daughter. I think of Deb's husband who will be going in for surgery uh, in a little bit. Lord, we do think of uh, just the various ones, Lord, who, um, Lord, you have it all in your hand. I pray for this church. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the past year. I thank you for the blessings, and I thank you, Lord, for the hardships. I thank you, Lord, for the good and the bad, because you tell us, Lord, to be thankful in all things. And so, Lord, today I thank you. I thank you for our deacons. I thank you for our church officers, and, Lord, their faithfulness through the past year. And I think of the new ones who will be coming in and starting up here as of tomorrow. And uh, Lord, we just praise you for those who have volunteered, those who have given time. I think of the many volunteers who help out on Tuesdays and, um, and, and Fridays and uh, Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights and Friday nights. And Lord, you just have blessed us above and beyond what we could ever imagine. I thank you for the freezers and refrigerators that are full downstairs. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to reach into our community. And, uh, Lord, if it be with food uh, physically or with some upcoming Bible studies that we'll be doing uh, in a spiritual sense, we do thank you, Lord, that it's not us who's doing, it's you doing. And we thank you for what you will do, not just for what you have done, but, Lord, for what you will be doing. So, Lord, work in the midst here today. Uh, uh, work in our hearts. I do pray for our country today. I pray for our leaders. I pray for from the from the local leaders all the way up to our government leaders. Lord, this year, 
It's an election year. And Lord, I, I, I know that it's going to be a time where there, there's going to be infighting and, and talking back and forth. And uh, Lord, it's, it's not going to be pleasant at times. But Lord, I, I pray that we would not focus on the things of this world, but we would focus on you. And we would seek your face. Help our leaders to seek your face. Lord, we think of our missionaries today. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless them. Provide for them. I think of our military, our first responders. Today is a busy day for our first responders. They're out in the forefront protecting those who will be pardoning all night long. And Lord, I ask that, Lord, you would just be with our first responders today. Encourage and strengthen them, I do pray. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for North Chester Baptist Church. We thank you for what you have in store this coming year. And we ask, Lord, that you bless. I do thank you and I do commit these things into the precious name of Jesus Christ. We thank you in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles today. We're going to talk about standing on the promises. You know, we looked at the various promises, we looked at six promises this morning <clears throat> that we have seen and we have adopted as, uh, as, as key verses. We have a, another uh, theme verse that we have selected or I've selected for next year. Um, you, won't, uh, you won't hear about it today, you'll hear about it next year, okay? Uh, not 365 days from today, you will hear about it next Sunday as we talk about our theme verse for 2024. Uh, but uh, but we've talked about uh, we talked about trusting in the Lord in Proverbs chapter three. Um, you know we talked about casting our cares upon Him in First uh, Peter chapter uh, five and verse seven. Uh, we've talked about how God is able to do more than what we can ever imagine. And I like that verse in Ephesians chapter uh, in chapter three and verse twenty, where it says says that He will do things more than what we can ever imagine. Listen, my mind can imagine a lot of things. And God will do above and beyond what we can ever think or imagine. We've talked about, um, uh, you know, about in, um, in Jeremiah, we've talked about how God has a plan for us. A plan for the future. God knows what tomorrow holds. God knows what is in store for North Chester Baptist Church. God knows, I, I praise the Lord, I um, you know, I've, I've said this before and I'm going to say it now, but I praise the Lord for what God has been doing here in this church. You know, there was a couple years ago, I was very, very concerned that we were on the road to closing our doors. We weren't meeting budget. We weren't, um, you know, we weren't seeing souls saved. We weren't seeing people baptized. You know, we were, we, were, we were burying the dead. Our numbers were getting smaller. And we were wondering, you know, Pam and I, you know, as pastor and pastor's wife, we've talked about, you know, where's this going? God has a plan and a future. Today, our membership is up. We, uh, we probably have about 90 people who come on a regular basis at this point time. Remember, we were almost down to 55 people on Sunday morning. You know, Tom told me this morning, this doesn't mean you stop giving, okay? But Tom told me this morning that we were that we ended the year $17,000 above budget. That's without, that's without today's offer. Is it me doing it? No. Is it Tom doing it? No. Is it the deacons doing it? No, it's God doing it. Amen. Why? Because he has a hope for us. We talked about in Sunday school about how, how today the world is struggling with suicide. And they're starting at an early age. We're talking about kids as young as nine years old committing suicide. Why? Because there is no hope. Our Lord is a God who says, I have a plan for you. I have a hope for you. That's the promise of God. That's what God is doing, and that's what God is taking care of. You know, we we talked about uh, we we talked about him, uh, his promises, but we also uh, we also talked about how <clears throat> how he is our father. 
Abba. Isn't it neat to be able to call God our Father? He's our Daddy. And because our da He's our Daddy, you know, we have the right to be called the children of God. Think about that. You and I, who, who don't deserve anything, God has said, listen, I, I have called you, I have chosen you to be my child. Can I say this? Maybe I shouldn't, but can I say this? Why aren't we always living that way? We should be living as children of God. We never know what God's going to bring our way. We never know what God's going to do. But God is a faithful God. When, um, when Jim McBride went for his swim and then a trip in the hot tub, I know the story now because I've seen it about four or five times on TV. Okay. But when he, um, when, when he went for a sit in the hot tub, his plan wasn't that his heart would stop. His heart stopped. And the Lord brought him back. Amen. Through people, don't get me wrong, but it's the Lord's doing. Amen. Why? Because he's our father. He cares for us. And I can't help but think that Jim can't be sitting here today as he is without the thought in his mind, God saved my life for a purpose. What do I need to be doing for God? But isn't that how we all should be looking at life? This past year, the idea of, of walking in Christ, rooted and grounded in Him, is what it's about. You and I need to understand that we as God's children need to stand on the promises that God has made. Why? Because His promises never fail. His promises are true. His promises are sure. They're a sure foundation that I can build my life upon. And I can, I can be without a shadow of doubt knowing that if God said it, He's going to do it. And I can believe it. And I can live it. My friend, that's what we're talking about today. You know, I, I, I love this last Sunday of the year. I, I really, I, I do not like Christmas on Monday. Just because for me, it means there's so much work to get ready for Sunday, which I have to do on Saturday, which means if I, Christmas is on Monday, then I have to get ready for Christmas three days early. And most of you know I'm not that organized for me to be ready three days early for Christmas. I wait till the night before, and usually on the 24th, I'm not still out buying Christmas gifts. However, I like the 31st being on Sunday. Because on Sunday, I can look and I can say, okay, God, this past 365 years, look what you've done. And I can stand on the edge of 2024, and I can look ahead, and I can say, as Paul says, I don't think of the things that are behind, but I press forward to the call, the, the high calling of God, and I'm going to serve God. Why? Because God's been faithful back here. He's going to be faithful up here. Amen. Why? Because of His promises. I can stand on the promises of God. And my friends, if you're here today and you're struggling with, with something, I don't know what it is. And some of you, I could go around the room and I could pick out some things that you probably then are going through because as pastor I have the privilege of knowing that I'm not going to mention them from the pulpit because nobody wants to be pointed out from the pulpit. Right, J.W.? <laughs> you're right. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about, okay? But, but bottom line is, we all have something we're struggling with. We all have a family member that's hurting. We all have a friend or a neighbor that's going through something. And listen, we can depend upon Christ. Today, I want us to go to a passage of Scripture as we talk about these, um, uh, these standing on His promises. And I want us to go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. So if you will take your Bibles with me and go over to Proverbs chapter 3. For you folks that, um, I, and I said this in, in our youth, uh, an easy way to find Proverbs is taking your Bible and opening it to the center of your Bible. Center of your Bible is Psalms. 
Usually every Bible opens right to Psalm. It's the middle of the Bible. And then you go one book, one book over towards the back of the Bible. You go to Proverbs chapter 3. In Proverbs chapter 3, we have a, a text that is a longer text. One of our theme verses, the first theme verse we had in 2019, or sorry, 2018, came out of this passage. And that's Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6. But in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 down through verse 10, we have five promises that God has made. And I'd like to look at those five promises here today. I'd like to see those promises and encourage our hearts today. It's interesting, it starts, and before I open in prayer, we need to understand a couple things with regards to these promises that God has made. The first thing we need to understand is that there are two things to remember in studying this passage. Number one, that not every promise that God makes that is a physical promise will be fulfilled physically. Sometimes the promises made in Proverbs will be, made, will be a promise in the spiritual sense, not just a physical sense. We need to remember that. Okay? And then, uh, and then, secondly, we need to understand that in this passage, as God gives a promise, He always gives a condition to meet that promise. Okay, so that's the first thing. Two things I said we, when we study this passage we need to remember. Okay, the second thing we need to understand is that this is written from a father's perspective to a son. And notice that in verse 1. It says, to my son. We, we understand this to be Solomon writing to one of his kids. I don't know which kid. I didn't do the research to find out which kid. I don't know if history has what kid he's writing to. But I think the parallel is this. The truths that are given in this text are given to us by our Father. Remember what, the, remember what the Word of God tells us. The Word of God tells us in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. It says this, in this matter when you pray, say this. Our Father, which art in heaven. We need to understand that if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God is your Father. Even that, even that promise which we've already looked at in Romans chapter 8 in verse, in verse 15 says, uh, for, we, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again unto fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. He is our Father. I want us to understand that here in this text is a picture of, of our Heavenly Father speaking to us, and He's saying, listen, I want to give you five promises. And I'd like to look at these five promises here today. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, in the next few minutes that we have, help us to run through these promises real quick. But Lord, help it not just to be a mental exercise. Help it to be a heart exercise. That, Lord, we would understand and we would apply what your words are. So Lord, use my words, but Lord, let it not be my words. Let it be your words coming forth. I do thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Five promises. They go in pairs of two. Two verses each, each time. Verses 1 through 10. Ten verses. Five promises. Each promise has two verses. Okay, so let's look at, verse, at the first promise. First promise in verse 1 says, My son... Do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandment for length of days and long life and a peace they will add to you. So notice, notice what this promise is. Okay, so the first thing we see in each one of these couplets, each one of these couplets has two things. One is the promise and two is the condition. So the promise here, okay, is a promise of life and prosperity. God says, I'm going to give you life. I'm going to give you life and I'm going to give you peace. The term peace here has the idea of fullness, has the idea of, 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 of length, has the idea of, 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 of plenty. Okay? And so what we find here in verse 2 is the, the length of days and long life. God is going to promise length of days and long life. He's going to promise us life, and He's going to promise us, if I can put it a little bit differently, He's going to promise us a life more abundant. 
Does that sound familiar to you? See, in the New Testament, Jesus is speaking, and he says these words, and I'm not going to put anything on PowerPoint today, but he says these words in John chapter 6 and verse 35. He says, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. In John chapter 11 and verse uh, in verse 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the light. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus is life. Without Him, there is no life. We need to understand that. The promise that the, that, the, uh, that the Father made to the Son, the promise that God gives to us is we can have life. And that life is a life eternal. That life is a life that never ends. How? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only source of life. He is the one who gives direction. He is the one who gives, uh, who, who gives that life. He breathes that life into us. When? When we call upon the name of Jesus. That is exactly what, the, what we find in Proverbs. He gives life. But it's interesting. Jesus also told his disciples in John chapter 10, in verse 10. Okay, John chapter 10 and verse 10, he says this. He says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, however, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. See, Jesus is not interested in us just having life. He wants us to have a full life. He wants to have us to have an abundant life. So often we see our life as, okay, I'm just going through life. I'm just going through the routine of the every day. I get up. I brush my teeth. I, uh, I you know, have breakfast. I go to work. I come home from work. I have dinner. I, you know, I, 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 I get a little snack before I watch, you know, I watch a TV show with a little snack. I go to bed. It's the same routine over and over. And God says, that's not what I'm interested in. He says, I want you to have a life that is an exciting life, that is a full life, that is a life that is more abundant. He wants to give us that abundance, and it can only be found where? In Him. And that's what the Word of God says. See, we find that the first, um, the, 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 the first promise that is made to the, from the Father to the Son is a promise of, um, of, uh, of life and prosperity or abundant life. Notice the condition that goes along with that. The condition that goes along with it. Just, just like Christ said, listen, if you're going to have life in me, you need to put your faith and your trust in me. He says, no other, there, there's no other way to heaven. There's no other way to the Father except by me. There's a condition there, isn't there? A lot of people tell me, well, Pastor, I'm a Christian. I'm born in a Christian. I was born in a Christian home. I don't care if you're born in a Christian home. That doesn't make you a Christian. Well, I was born in, you know, America is a Christian nation, and, and therefore I'm a Christian. No, it doesn't make you a Christian nation. Well, I was baptized when I was a kid. That doesn't make you a Christian. Let, let, make, make sure you understand that. The only way to become a Christian is the Word of God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, except Jesus Christ. He is the way. See, in Proverbs, we're given that same condition. Look what it says. It says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. There's a positive and a negative condition here. Notice that. The, 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 negative, uh, the negative condition is don't forget my law. What is the law? Let me tell you something. The law is the word of God. Don't forget my word. Don't forget what I've taught you. It's interesting. The father taught the son in chapter 2 the value of wisdom. And what, what are we told about wisdom? We're told that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We're told that later on in... in uh, uh, in Proverbs. But you know something? We need to understand that you know we cannot forget what God has taught. Do you know what I have found about America? America has forgotten about God. The Word of God says, listen, if you want long life, if you want a life that's more abundant, He says, remember my, my law. Remember my Word. And then, and then He gives a positive. He gets, That's the negative. Don't forget, but he says, keep. Notice what it says there in verse 1. 
In verse 1, it says, uh, uh, it says this, it says, But let your hearts keep my commandments. So the positive is keep the word. What are the commandments of the Lord? Now, some people would tell me, well, the commandments of the Lord are the Ten Commandments. I shall love the Lord thy God with all thy, you know, with all thy heart, with... You know, you shall, you, you shall not make any other gods and, and, you know, the Ten Commandments. I'm not going to stand up here and give you the Ten Commandments, but that's not what he's talking about here. He's not talking about the Ten Commandments. He's not talking about the 669 or whatever commandments that the Jewish people had in their ceremonial law. It's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about here, again, he's talking about the Word of God. He's saying, keep what I've taught you. And notice where you're supposed to keep it. What does the verse say? Where are you supposed to keep it? In your heart. Hey, that reminds me of a Bible verse. Psalm 119 in verse 11. If I hide God's word in my heart, I will not sin against thee. Pretty interesting, isn't it? The heart, the seat of where it needs to be. You know, well, read scripture, it'll go into your heart. No. Memorize scripture, it'll go into your heart. No. Let me give you another word. Meditate upon scripture. Take God's word, read it, memorize it, and then think about it. Why? So you don't forget it. So you can keep it. See, the first promise here is a promise of life. The second promise, found in verses 3 and 4, look what it says. In verses 3 and 4, it tells us this. And so, uh, in, uh, sorry, in verse 3, it says, um, uh, but let me make sure uh, I'm on the right, the right passage. Uh, it says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. And so find favor and esteem in the sight of God and man. What's the second promise? The second promise there in verse 4 is reputation, a good name. It's, you know, I read somewhere that it's talking here about success. You know, there's some preachers today that will preach a, a, a gospel of success. Obey God and God will bless you. I believe that's true. But the blessing that God blesses you with isn't always the blessing that the world says is a blessing. See, we need to understand that God's blessing sometimes is for Randy Freeman to walk through the wilderness. Because I need that wilderness time. Sometimes God's blessing in my life is that I go without. Because Randy Friedman needs to trust God instead of my banking account. Or instead of what I can do. Because I can't do it without him. See, the, the, the picture that we find here from the, from the Father is, listen, a good name is important. Success is important. But you know something? We need to make sure that it's done the way God wants it done. So if we're going to find favor and high esteem, we need to do certain things. It's interesting in the New Testament, we find that, uh, that favor is one of the characteristics that a pastor has to have. He has to walk uprightly with those who are outside, is what it says. He has to have a good reputation. Now granted, pastors aren't perfect. <clears throat> pastors have their problems and their difficulties, and pastors sin like everybody else. I will tell, I'll be the first to tell you, don't put me on a pedestal, because as soon as you put me on a pedestal, I'll collapse that pedestal. And you'll be disappointed. The Word of God says, all of us, need to have a reputation when it comes to out there. You know, it's, uh, it, it does say in Proverbs 22 and verse 1, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, a loving favor rather than silver and gold. You know, I read verses like that sometimes, and I'll be honest with you, I read verses like that and I say, you know, I'd like to try that silver and gold sometime. You know, just, just, but I know what the psalmist is getting at, or what the, what the writer here, the uh, that the preacher is getting at. And, um, and Solomon, who wrote this, calls himself the preacher. But the preacher here is saying, listen, listen, money will all pass away. Your reputation will. 
How's your reputation? How's the reputation of the church in our community? How's your, is your yay, yay, and your nay, nay? Do people know that what you're going to tell them is the truth and only the truth? If you say no to somebody, is that, you know, I, I think a lot of times, you know, we were at the doctor's, and, uh, and the doctor had asked Pam to, to keep a record of her blood pressure. Her blood pressure has been all over this past, uh, this past few months, and, and, you know, we were real concerned. I thought I would have to take her to the emergency room, and God took care of all that. Okay, but, uh, but the doctor said, listen, listen, I, I want you to keep track of your blood pressure. And so she takes her <coughs> blood pressure every day. She writes it down, and, and, she, and, and he said, call me with your blood pressure. And, and so she, she writes it down, she gives the doctor a call. We go in to see the doctor, and the doctor, she's talking about, you know, different medicines she needs to be on there. And they're all on cholesterol medicine and not blood pressure medicine, which we didn't understand it. And she says, but doctor, I've been taking my blood pressure, and my blood pressure is real high. And he says, I'm not concerned about that. She, he, she said, wait a minute, what do you mean you're not concerned about how my blood pressure? He says, well, I, I didn't really believe you anyway. It's like, why in the world are we doing all this work if you're not going to believe us? Okay? I, I, you know, it's, it's, it, it blew my mind. But let me ask you something. Are you a person that people believe? That's your reputation. That your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Okay? We find here, okay, that the word that the word of God tells us that not only is there a promise of a good reputation, but there's a condition for it. And um, the, uh, we, we, need to, we need to understand that. Before I look at the condition, the Bible is full of people who had a good reputation. Um, Joseph. You realize Joseph? I'm not talking about Mary's husband. I'm talking about Joseph of Egypt. Remember when he was in Potiphar's house? The Word of God tells us this with regards to Potiphar's house. In uh, Gen Genesis 39, verse 2. It says, the Lord was with Joseph and gave him, and, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, uh, the Egyptian. Two verses later, we read these words. In verse 4 of chapter 39. So Joseph found favor in the sight of him and served him. That's what we need. Daniel. Daniel is another perfect example of a man who was living in a hard situation but found favor with those who he was serving them. We need to find favor in our own country today, in our own neighborhoods, in our own families. There are conditions here. Verse 3, look what it says in verse 3. It says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. <coughs> you know, the term here, mercy and truth, I think, is dealing with loving kindness. And it's dealing with faithfulness. Let your loving kindness and faithfulness be seen to all men. You know, I, I struggle, and I'm not, I, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I struggle with necklaces. Now, don't get me wrong. I buy my, ne I buy my wife a necklace. I try to every Christmas buy her jewelry. I'm not against jewelry. But I have a problem when somebody wears the cross oh, yes. and then lives according to the world. Yeah. I've done my job. Look, I'm telling the world that I'm a Christian. See, I'm wearing the cross. See, the, song, the, uh, the preacher here tells us to wear it around your neck and write it on the tablet of your heart. We tend to write things down. You know, social media is a great, is a great tool. Don't get me wrong. And, uh, you know, but how many Christians, how many people, I should say, I don't even know if they're Christians, how many people will put something religious on social media but live any way they want to live. This is, not what, this is not what the preacher's talking about here. The preacher's talking about a life that is faithful, that is walking with the Lord, that is living that life. If you call yourself a Christian, you better live that life. 
so you have that reputation. You know, this whole idea of, of mercy and kindness and, uh, and, and faithfulness, uh, John deals with that. If you, uh, if you look at, uh, at 1 John, and, uh, and, and again, we don't have time to, to read all of that or to look at it, but in 1 John chapter 4, great passage. In 1 John chapter 4, and I'll, I'll end with this. In 1 John chapter 4, it says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. See, so if you don't love, how is the world going to know that you're of God? Just because you love somebody doesn't make you of God. Don't, don't get me wrong. But a Christian should be a person who loves people. Because that's an outflow of what God has done for us. We love Him. Why? Because He first loved us. And so He loved us unconditionally. We need to love one another. And we need to minister. And there needs to be that kindness. And there needs to be that faithfulness in our walk every day. Is what we find here in this text. Okay, it goes on in, uh, in 1 John chapter 4. It says, He who does not love does not know God. Can that be any plainer? He who does not love does not know God. Let me suggest something to you here today. First John was not written to the world. It's written to the believer. It's written to the person whose name is written in the book of life. Who will be in heaven. And he says, listen, you don't love. How? How can you really love God? We're not talking here about being saved or not. We're talking about our testimony to the world around us. This is what we're talking about here. Okay? So the, 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 the second promise is a promise of reputation and success. The third promise, okay, is found in verses, you probably guessed it, okay, the next two verses. Five and six. We will come back next week and we will finish these up next week. My question to you today is are you standing on the promises of God? Yes. Are you standing with God? Are you standing for God? Yeah. You know, the Word of God tells us we need to be doing that. You know, the Word of God tells us this, and it's a little bit of what I just talked about with this last promise, but it says that we as God's children ought to walk in a way that's not rendering evil <laughs> for evil or reveling for reveling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit the blessing. That's what we've been talking about today. The willingness to say, okay, God, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live by your book. I'm going to stand on your promise. Are you willing to stand in the promises of God? Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, bless us today. Help us be willing to stand on your promises. Lord, that, uh, that we may know you and uh, know you better. Be with each one here today. And I'm not going to make an altar call today. I don't want to do any of that. I just want you, Lord, to challenge each person in this room. That they would look into their own heart and say, Have I been a blessing? Have I not been a blessing? Have I walked with you? Have I not walked with you? Lord, help them examine their hearts today. As we end this year and as we start next year, help us to start by saying, okay, Lord, we're going to walk the way you want us to walk. I do thank you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, is, that, is that?